My money don't wiggle wiggle. It falls. On Instagram, my custom wallpaper reel got over 27 million views. Like what the heck bro? Because of this there came a lot of questions and some people asking for a full video tutorial. So this is how to make a custom icon integrated desktop wallpaper. Let's start off with a black canvas on Adobe Photoshop. The exact size for the monitor screen I'm using right now is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. But if you convert it into inches, you only get about 6 by 3 inches, which is pretty small, just like your D. This wallpaper I'm creating right now is actually not ideal since I just used the regular 1920 by 1080. I suggest you use 4 800 by 2 700 pixels or about 16 by 9 inches. And always use 300 dpi resolutions as well. Let's get a move on. Here's a tip to get the exact placement of your icons. First, take a screenshot of your desktop. Now paste it on Photoshop. As you can see, I used the exact 1920 by 1080 here. So when I pasted this screenshot, it was placed exactly within the canvas. But if you're using the bigger size, instead of pasting the screenshot right away, I suggest you take a screenshot then open MS Paint, paste it there, save it as an image. Now go back to Photoshop, click Place Embedded, open the screenshot, and it is imported with the exact size as the canvas. This is important because you need the exact placement of your icons in the design. Alright, I move the icons a little bit in different positions to get my idea to work because the location of my computer will be my basis for everything. My idea is a big bedroom studio. I've always wanted a big cozy bedroom where I can have all the things I need. My PC, drawing tablet, a mini library, a big bed, a MIDI keyboard, a space for more instruments basically to record. I'd also put our cat in Hinata. I miss her. She's living with my brother right now. Hinata, if you're watching this, just know that I miss you and I love you. So I think it is important to do something that's close to your heart and I believe it will speak to others as well. Going back, the estimated angle of my computer is negative 19 degrees on this side and 19 degrees on the other. So a tip for you, just type in these angles right here when you're using the rotate view tool. The trick in Photoshop is to press and hold shift while drawing. It will make your stroke in a perfect straight line without shift. With shift, after laying out the initial sketch, we can now move on to the final line art. As you can see here, I've made different layers for different angles. This is to be able to erase unwanted intersecting lines easier. You can choose a layer to erase without affecting the other. The line art is done, my boys. It's time for the fun part. Subscribing to my channel. Boy, if you don't get Time for base colors. What I usually do is to just lay out the colors that I imagine would look good. For this particular work, I thought of a cozy feel, something that would also represent the colors I like, which is cyan, orange, and gray. It doesn't matter if at first you're not perfectly coloring within the lines of the objects, we just want to get a general feel of the colors, if it would speak to me visually, and emotionally, and spiritually. Mm. Uh... I usually try different variations and once I've found something that best suits me, I then start to do the final application of base colors in a separate layer. I'd lessen the opacity of the sketchy color. Different objects have their own layer to easily fix them individually later on. After adding more details, a few color adjustments, I can say that I'm happy with this. Time to move on with the lights. So I made something like an almost sunset feel. I used a separate layer and made the layer type to overlay. Oh, overlay? What is overlay? Overlay. You can also use screen or soft light or color dodge, but it's up to you to experiment on these. Since I wanted it to be cozy, warm colors are just naturally comfortable to the eyes. The warm colored light will enter through the windows on the left side part, and for additional effects, I used lamps and TV lights for cool colors, just to add conflict and balance at the same time with the warm lights. Shades and shadows. With all the light sources in place, you can now easily decide where to put the shadows. Basically, shadows have to be located at the opposite side of the light source. This is just to kind of add a bit of depth, and I ain't talking about how much you owe me your subscription. Moving on, to finalize this, let us add dust particles, more textures, Hinata's fur. On a separate layer, I just randomly put particles in there, just filling in some dead spaces. I also experiment with textures by putting a filter on my shadows. I duplicate the shadow layer, and on one layer, I apply color halftone, then play on both shadow layers' opacity until I'm happy with it. That's one of the tricks that I do as well to give that texture on the shadows. Another trick to make it extra striking is to darken the corners of the art. This is what you call vignette or vignette. 
I'm not sure. It just helps gravitate the viewer's eyes to the center. I think a big factor that made this art explode is the overall composition, how things work together both in color and its concept, and wherever you look, there's balance. Balance, 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 which is a very important principle of art. I hope this video helps you. I just want to create art content and maybe inspire some of you. You can help me out by commenting down below what you want to see next in this channel. And don't forget to spam the subscribe button button just like you did on instagram and yeah that's it and until next time my fellow broccolians and broccolilies money don't jiggle jiggle it falls i like to see a wiggle wiggle for sure <laughs> makes me wanna triple triple you know riding in my fear